Welcome back to Random Tech. On today's episode, we're going to be creating a simple circuit to connect a Game Boy printer to a computer. Why? Because it's random. Now credit where credit is due. This project is in four things to furtech.org, which made the original guide over 13 years ago. So all credit goes to them for their debugging of the printer and source code for the various aspects. I am mainly going over the steps and adding additional information that I think is missing from a few steps as well updating a few parts to the modern equivalents. For this project, we will need the following. A DTEC USB with a PR 2303 prolific chip embedded within. Furtech originally recommended a fake CA42 Nokia cable. However, I can't seem to easily locate a similar cable anymore. I tried using a real CA42 Nokia cable, but upon cutting into it, I discovered that it wasn't actually using the prolific chip we need. So instead of trying various other potential cables, I decided to go with the DTEC one, which clearly states it's using the prolific chip. Plus, with its pinouts, we don't have to do any dismantling of the cable, which is a plus. Next, we need a Game Boy Link cable. Pretty much any two-player link cable should work as long as it includes all six pins. If in doubt, I would just check the comments to see if anyone mentions using it with a Game Boy printer. Remember that we will be cutting the cable in our case, so I wouldn't spend too much on it. We will also need a 15K ohm resistor. I'm using a half watt one in this case an ATtiny45 microcontroller, which would be the brain communicating to and from the printer and computer. To program the microcontroller, we will be using a tiny AVR programmer by Spark Fun. And of course, we will need a Game Boy printer and paper. If you are having a hard time finding new printer paper, you can always just cut out an old receipt to size and print on that. I got my new printer paper from retrofixes.com. And lastly, one regular wire or jumper wire. Now, depending on whether you wish to solder a lot or very little, you may optionally want to get a breadboard and eight more jumper wires. The complete part list will be listed in my blog post linked in the video description below. Now let's quickly test that the Game Boy printer is indeed working. We have to insert six AA batteries into it. If we hold down the feed button while flipping the power switch, we should get a test printout. With it seeming to work properly, let's continue. Before connecting everything together, we need to first program the microcontroller. This was the first time doing so myself, but following this quick tutorial written by Jason A. Cox, it was pretty straightforward. First, we are going to head over to the Arduino website. Click on software and download the latest IDE available. While that is downloading, 
we are going to pop the ATtiny35 chip into the USB programmer, making sure that the dot on the chip is next to the notch on the programmer. Back to the Arduino IDE, which we will then open. Next, we would need to install the bird manager for the ATtiny45. We'll click on the Arduino on the top menu and then preferences. Copy the link found in the tutorial and paste it in the section listed additional boards manager URLs and click OK. Navigate to the tools menu from the top bar, go down to board and click on boards manager. On the side listed boards manager type ATtiny into the search and install the one by David A. Millis. Now make sure that your USB programmer is plugged into the computer. Go to the top toolbar and click on tools. Navigate to board and select the ATtiny25-45-85 option. Go back to tools and for processor select ATtiny45. Go back to tools again, and for the clock, select internal 8 MHz. Go back to tools one final time, and for the programmer, select USB Tiny ISP. Now we can finish this by clicking Burn Bootloader under tools. This should light up the USB programmer board for a quick moment. From here, we are going to head back over to Furtech and click on Source for AVR Studio. Highlight everything and copy. Back in the Arduino main screen, we've placed the skeleton code by highlighting it off and pasting your copied code. Once then, go to Sketch on the top bar and click Upload Using Programmer. Once again, your USB programmer board should light up during this process. That's it! Your microprocessor has now been programmed and is ready to use. As a side note, you'll notice on Furtech that above the source card there is also a hex file. We don't need this in our case, as the Arduino IDE did everything for us. However, you could skip the Arduino IDE entirely and upload the hex file to the ATtiny via AVRDude. Using a command line interface, assuming you are located in the same directory as the hex file that you just downloaded, run the following command. Once again though, this is just one other way to program the ATtiny. And if you use the Arduino IDE, this is not necessary, but both ways do work when tested. Now on to the actual creation of the circuit. First, we are going to take the Game Boy Link cable and cut off one end of it. Using a wire stripper, we are going to remove the outer cable coating to expose several smaller wires within. We can then strip each of the smaller wires to expose an end on each. Using a multimeter, we will check to find out which pin each wire corresponds to. We are looking for wires for SN, SCK, 
S out and ground. In my case, I found that S in was the green wire, S C K was blue, S out was brown, and ground was red. However, this would probably differ between cables. I cut off the other wires that were not needed in our case to avoid confusion. From this point, we are going to solder a jumper wire to each of our smaller wires to help extend them and make connecting them easier. I tried to use a similar colored jumper wire for each smaller wire. Now we are going to take our breadboard and place the microprocessor in the middle of it so that its legs overlap each side of the middle. It doesn't matter where along the breadboard the chip is placed, but keep attention to the dot on the chip. Now with our Game Boy Link Gaber, we will attach the SCK wire to the chip pin kitty corner of the dot. Next, we attach the S in wire and the S out wire. We are going to pause here quickly. Now my S in and S out wires are actually incorrectly positioned here. They should have been flipped, otherwise the computer will not be able to communicate with the printer, which I found out later. Back to the circuit. On our final bottom pin, we are going to attach a jumper wire to the top pin with the dot. We attach our ground wire to the top pin opposite the bottom SCK pin. Then we are going to add our resistor connecting the S out pin to the VCC pin, i.e. the one with the dot. Finally, we are going to grab our DTEC cable, which has a nice diagram of the connectors. We will plug a jumper wire into each connector and connect the other end to the corresponding pin on the chip. Starting from the top left of the chip, we will plug in the ground, RX, TX, and VCC connectors. And that's it. This is what we end up with. We just need to plug our Game Boy Link cable into the printer and our DTEC cable into our computer. The computer should, in theory, install the driver of the cable on its own. However, if it doesn't, as in my case, simply go to Prolific's website to download it. I'm using version 408 
for this. And even though it lists Windows 7 or higher as the requirement, it installed just fine on my Windows XP computer I'm using. We'll head to furtech.org one more time to download the Game Boy printed link. If everything works well, we can select a test image and print it. We do have to press the feed on the printer to get the image out enough to tear it off. Watching the program work, the area on the right with the image to be printed moves upwards a bit with each line the printer prints. Once again, I want to thank furtech.org for the original write-up and source code provided. Without it, this project wouldn't have been possible. Now let's talk about a few potential problems that I encountered during this process, and you may too. As mentioned earlier, the SN and SOUT wires must be flipped when connecting to the microprocessor. I completely glossed over this fact initially, and was wondering why I wasn't getting any response from the printer. So if the program seems to hang and go nowhere, or says it is sending to the printer but nothing is happening, try flipping the two wires, S in and S out, around, which should solve this problem. When you click print, you may be greeted with a runtime error of 8018. This error took me a little while to figure out, but eventually I solved it. Looking through the source code of the Game Boy printed link, we see the COM port is listed as port 5 and doesn't look at any other ports. So we have to make sure our DTEC cable is registered to port 5. To do so, click Start, right click on My Computer, and then click Properties. Go to the Hardware tab and click on Device Manager. Click on the plus icon next to Ports to expand the list. Find the prolific listed and double click it. Click on the Port Settings tab and then click on Advanced. Change the COM port number to COM5 and click OK. Now going back to the GB Print program, this error no longer appears. If you try to start the GB print program and are greeted by the message that the component comdlg32.ocx is not registered co correctly, try the following. Click start, then all programs, then accessories, and open the command prompt. Enter the following two lines Hit an enter at the end of each. If no error messages appear, you should be good to go. 
If the previous step did not go as planned and you ended up with a load library failed message, then download the com dlg32.ocx bar. I left one possible download link in my blog post below. Navigate to your C drive under my computer and open the Windows folder. If you are using a 32-bit machine, locate the folder System32. Otherwise, for a 64-bit machine, locate the folder SysWow64. Drag a copy the com dlg32.ocx file that you just downloaded into it. Now go back to the command prompt again and retype your two previous regsvr32 commands. As long as you get the ocx file loaded, you should be good to go and you can disregard any additional messages in our case. That concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.